Okay, perfect. Can you see that okay? Good, okay, perfect, awesome. Okay, okay, so what's something you guys are grateful for today? Would love to hear. Um, and I've been trying to think this morning too. I, may, I make like a little list of gratefuls and I had a bunch of just like random stuff. Um, and, and it was funny because this morning when I was walking through those, I was actually thinking, I'm just so grateful to be able to have the opportunity to be at work sometimes in Charleston and sometimes in Kentucky because I get I now at first I to be honest I hated it I can say that because Adam's not on the call <laughs> um, but I it was just stressful and now I just feel so grateful for the opportunity because I look so forward to being in each place when I'm not there and and to think about all of the things that I like about being in two different places which is kind of cool so uh, yes Monica totally agree with you there Definitely grateful for the fall weather. That's my very favorite time of the year. So um, David book a snow skiing vacation. Oh, that's fun. That's awesome. In March, super fun. Um, okay, so keep keep sharing what you guys are grateful for. So I did want to tell you, I goofed on the, <laughs> everyone was messaging Heather and I, and I'm like, oh no, I think I goofed on the Tua documentary. So it wasn't on Netflix. It was actually, I think, on Fox, was it? Did we ever figure that out, Heather? I think if you Google it. I don't, I couldn't find it. I'm thinking it was maybe a one-time oh, showing. Oh, yeah. shoot. Okay. Maybe they'll release it again later on. I hope so, because I really, keep. you guys keep searching, and if we find it, we'll post it, and if y'all find it, share it in the group, too because it was so incredible. I'm just, um, I just am still obsessed with it. And I wanted to go back and watch it again. And, and we weren't able to find it either. So, um, so I'm glad I at least was able to take some notes from that. Uh, but it was, it was really good. So today I want to share with you guys a mindset lesson um, that was originated from my coach, Terry Foster Nallen. And Terry is an amazing person. Um, I know Troy knows Terry. Heather knows Terry. She's just, I now actually talk to her twice, twice a week instead of once a week, <laughs> which is, uh, which is great. I told her, I'm like, you aren't allowed to take me back down to one time a week. I don't think. Um, but she introduced this exercise to me and I, I really like it. And it was I actually brought it out and just kind of did it again one morning. Um, and, and so I wanted to share it with you guys. So you may want to write some of these down, but also we can, we'll post the slides too or you can take a picture of the screen. So it's the six basic needs of human behavior. And, and so we're gonna run through the six, and then at the end, I'm gonna ask you to kind of rate your top three um, that are most important to you, and then narrow those down to, to your main one. Um, and I like, does anybody besides me like, like brain stuff? I really find it intriguing. I like to know kind of how we operate and why we operate and all of those things. So here are the six needs, and we're gonna break them down individually, but the first need that every human being has is certainty and comfort. The second one is uncertainty and variety, which you would think that those are opposite and how could you need both, but you actually do, and we'll kind of break that down. The third need is significance. The fourth need is love and connection. The fifth need is growth, and the sixth need is contribution. And so these are the six needs that every human, um, every human being actually must have. And so here's why this is important. And if you, I'm just going to kind of hot, like just quickly hit into this because we could spend 30 minutes on this, but here's what happens. Um, if you look right here at this main arrow, what we get input from our environment, from everything that is around us, our language, memories, decisions, beliefs, values, attitudes, ways of sorting things, information, strategies. And then those actually go into our um, internal representation of reality. And then we can actually develop them as a behavior or they can put us into an emotional state. And then that's actually what goes into the experiences that we have in life. Those are our results. Um, and we have these filters too. Um, delete, distort, generalize, input, uh, form. It's basically what we do with things that we get from the environment. And Terry has taught me this a lot, but largely unconscious and running on automatic for most people. 
So most of us, this part is just like the things that we do on autopilot or we're unconscious. We're not, not literally unconscious, but we're unconsciously doing them and they're just kind of on autopilot. And so this is important because all of these things are applicable in all of our value areas of our life. And so if you break your life down, you have career, family, relationships, personal growth and development, health and fitness and spirituality. When you look at all of these other, um, also known as the wheel of life, some of you have seen, I think we've maybe have done the wheel of life exercise on here one, one time, but this is very similar to that. But if you look at these, we all have, these are our, our value areas. And so these six basic human needs, they flow into these, but it's important for us to, and it's important for us to know which ones are most important to us because some are more important than others. So here's the first one. Need number one is certainty and comfort. The first human need is the need for certainty. It's our need to feel in control. I would love, by the way, I may ask some questions in the chat. I would love to hear y'all's feedback. It's our need to feel in control and to know what's coming next so we can feel secure. It's the need for basic comfort, the need to avoid pain and stress and to create pleasure. Our need for certainty is a survival mechanism. It affects how much risk we're willing to take in life, um, in our jobs, in our investments, in our relationships. The higher the need for certainty, the less risk you'll be willing to take or emotionally bear. By the way, this is where your real risk tolerance comes from. So one would love to know, would you say you are like a big risk taker or more on the lower spectrum of taking risks? Um, I, crazy enough, tend to sit right in the middle <laughs> and it depends on what it is. Um, I'm not a really big risk taker when it comes to like, would I jump out of a plane or it's like, absolutely not, uh, never. I don't, in business, I definitely probably am right in the middle too. Um, but I am willing to take a risk when it comes to like financial or anything like that. I didn't used to be, um, not at all, but I think now I'm just a little more in control of my emotions when it comes to that. But would love to hear if you guys in the chat feel like you are a really big risk taker um, is your risk tolerance really high or is it really low? And so the other thing with this is too is um, the need to feel in control. And that kind of made me laugh because that's something I've been talking to Terry about on my coaching calls over the last couple of weeks, because I would have never described myself as a control freak. And the older that I'm getting and the more things that I get into, I definitely realize that when I don't have the control, um, or at least the ability to have input on the situation, then it it tends to not be good for me. Um, so Don, you're kind of in the middle too. Jennifer, you're a risk taker. Okay, I can totally see that. Yep. So um, yeah, I would love to see where you guys think that you all are. But this is the very first one, and this is actually the the most important one that every human being needs is the certainty and comfort. The second need is uncertainty and variety. So let me ask you a question. Do you like surprises? I would love for you to answer in the chat. Do you like surprises? Um, I'm curious. To, I do not like surprises, by the way. Probably is not a surprise. Um, Monica, I can totally see that you like surprises. Yeah, Liz, absolutely not. <laughs> um, good surprises, Sam, I agree. Uh, Amy, you've jumped out of a plane twice? Wow, oh, you were a flight attendant for years. Okay, well, that makes sense. I'm the opposite um, of that when it comes to planes, but yes, David, I figured you would. So, okay, so keep answering if you like surprises. If you answered yes, <laughs> he, she, he, she says you're kidding yourself. You like the surprises that you want. The ones you don't want, you call problems. How true is that? Um, but you still need them to put some muscle in your life because you can't grow muscle or character unless you have something to push back against. And so this one to me is, I totally believe this. I think we do need a little bit of uncertainty and variety. Otherwise we're not growing, right? We're not developing. Um, we have to have some sort of uncertainty. Even if, um, even for those of us that really do not like surprises, we need them at some point so that, so that we can push back against something. And I think that that is so true. Uh, the third one is the need for significance. So this one's kind of simple and can get really deep, but we all need to feel important, special, unique, or needed. Um, so how do some of us get significance? Some people get significance financially. Some people feel significant when they are spending or when they're saving. It can be the total opposite. 
some people feel significant if they reach a certain degree um, or they get a certificate or they have some sort of award or achievement. Um, some people feel significant by getting tattoos. Some people get feel significant like spiritually. We all have different ways where we feel significant or how we feel important. Um, I think for me, mine's probably helping people. If I feel like I helped somebody achieve something, then that gives me significance. But I think everybody's is different. And so you need to be aware though and know if you, is this important to you? Is this, would this be one of your top three, the need to feel important or special or unique or needed? And sometimes I think if the answer to that is yes, we can feel like we're being judged. But the reality is I would say a very high percentage of people, this is, this is theirs. Um, oh, Missy, I'm so glad you're on. Miss you. Uh, Missy skydived. Oh my gosh. I did not know that. Wow, before you had the sun, now you won't take the risk. I've heard a lot of people say that. I will risk finances. Yeah, definitely. Money isn't making money. Don't spend it. Yep, totally true. Totally, totally true. So thank you for sharing, Missy. So um, so significance would be the third. So here's the fourth one, love and connection. The fourth basic need is love and connection. Love is the oxygen of life. It's what we all want and need most. Um, when we love completely, we feel alive. But when we lose love, the pain is so great that most people settle on connection, the crumbs of love. That is so true. <laughs> um, you can get that sense of connection or love through intimacy, through friendship, through prayer, through walking in nature. If nothing else works, you can get a dog. That made me laugh because that is me. <laughs> Adam says all the time, I love Frankie more than him or anybody else. Um, and I don't, I like, can't, I can't argue. I'm like, no, I love every, I love everyone equal as much as Frankie. He's just little and he can't talk or defend himself. That's what I always say. Um, so these first four needs are what I call the needs of the personality. We all find ways to meet these. So talking about certainty and then uncertainty and then significance and then love and connection. These are the needs of the personality. We all find ways to meet these, whether by working harder, coming up with a big problem, creating stories to rationalize them. And then the last two that we're going to talk about are the needs of the spirit. These are rare. Not everyone meets these. Um, and when these needs are met, we truly feel fulfilled. So the fifth one is growth. If you're not growing, you're dying. That's a John Maxwell quote. Um, if, uh, if a relationship is not growing, if a business is not growing, if you're not growing, it doesn't matter how much money you will have in the bank. Um, how many friends you have, how many people love you, you're not going to experience real fulfillment. And the reason that we grow, um, I believe, is so that we have something of value to give. Because the more that we're growing, it, the more that we have to give, right? And actually, oh my gosh, the, the John Maxwell Daily Reader today, I know a lot of you are reading that, was about um, mentoring and helping other people. And I don't know if any of you read it today, Rochelle, I think you probably read it today. If any of you read it today, it was about being able to, to mentor other people. And, and I related this to that because the more that we grow, the more that then we can pass on to somebody else who we are leading or mentoring, or um, we have the ability to just share something about you. So the fifth need is growth. This I'm a growth junkie. Would you guys feel like you are? I would love to hear that in the chat too. I know most of you, and I know most of you would say yes. Um, and I just, I always find it intriguing to talk to somebody who doesn't like to grow or doesn't like to learn because I just kind of always want to like dig deeper into that. Um, it just, it's, it's ironic to me. So then the sixth need is contribution. And, um, and Terry said, corny as it may sound, the secret to living is actually giving. And I feel very strongly that that is the, the case. Life's not about me. It's about we. So think about it. What's the first thing you do when you get good um, or exciting news? You call somebody you love and you share it with them. Um, sharing enhances everything you experience. The more that you share something, the more that it makes it special. It enhances it. It, it makes you excited. Life is really about creating meaning. And meaning does not come from what you get. It comes from what you give. And ultimately, it's not what you get that will make you happy long term, but rather who you become and what you contribute will. And so for me, I think this sometimes takes a while. Um, it takes a while to kind of, well, maybe not for some people. Some people, you just may be a natural giver um, and you have been since you were a kid. Um, and then other people, I think it, it can take a while to really mature into, into the giving and not having it be about you. And, and ultimately, like I always used to say, if, we, if I ever have like a bad day, as much as it sucks, if you go, 
and just focus on somebody else other than yourself, it completely switches what your mindset is or what your mood is or what you're thinking about. Um, and, and it works every single time. And I used to do this and we need to get back into this, but I used to do this with the, the leadership team that I led in, in an office, like once every quarter we would go and serve and give, and we would do it together. And usually it would come right at the time where we were all like, the agents were driving us nuts or we were exhausted or we had had, you know, just something trying had happened or it had been, um, I love what John Maxwell says too. Um, there's no con good consecutive two days in leadership, <laughs> which is so true. Um, and so it would always come at a time where we would, where we, uh, where ironically we would be going to serve and give. And sometimes I could tell a couple of the people may like not be excited about it or they would drag in late. But then honestly, by the time we got finished serving, you know, a hundred homeless people lunch for the whole entire breakfast, lunch and a snack for the afternoon, like we, it, everybody left and we were in the best moods and everybody was so happy and we were more bonded together as a team. And it was just because we, we gave. So here's what I want you to think about. And I really want you to take a minute and do this because it's, I, I did this this morning and it's just a good activity. Take a minute and write down your top three and I'm going to put them up on the screen again. Um, your top three in order of yourself and what's most important to you. What's your number one, your number two, and your number three in order? And then why is your number one, your number one? Where do you think that that actually comes from? So if you look through these again, what would be your number one, number two, and number three? Certainty and comfort, uncertainty and variety, significance, love and connection, um, growth, and contribution. And I just wanna like pause for a few seconds and have you really write down what your top three are and then I'll share with you what mine are today because I do think that they change um, depending on kind of where you're at in your life and and what you what you're experiencing and all of those things um, but I do I do think that they can change Rochelle four five six funny that it's that order four five six yep if you if you're done and you want to share in the chat, I would love to um, love to see that in there. Jennifer, ours are really close. So mine are five, one. No, sorry. Oh, I messed it up. Five, six, one. <laughs> five, six, one would be mine. Growth, contribution, and certainty more than likely. Um. Four, love and connection. Oh, lots of similars. Lots of four. Look at me automatically thinking, hmm, I didn't have a four in mine. I wonder. <laughs> the quickest way to rob something, right, is to compare it to something else. <laughs> that shows that we're all human, right? We all do that. Um, oh, good. Okay, yeah, lots of Lots of similar sixes for lots of people, one for lots of people, fours for lots of people, five. Yeah. Love it. Oh my gosh. Thanks for sharing. This is good. Didn't you guys like that? It's just such a good reminder because when you know what, what is the most important to you, um, then you can kind of focus on that. So uh, just to wrap it up, I posted this in the group. I just wanted to share it in case anybody didn't see it because I love this. I did not know this. I had never heard this before and I was fascinated by it. The only bird that will peck at an eagle is the crow. He sits on his back and bites his neck. The eagle does not respond or fight with the crow. It doesn't waste time or energy on the crow. It simply opens its wings and begins to rise higher in the sky. The higher the flight, the harder it is for the crow to breed, which really makes sense if you think about it. Eventually, the crow falls due to lack of oxygen. So stop wasting your time with the crows. Just take them to your heights and they'll fade. I love that. I'm going to put it in my office. I just think it's such a great reminder. Um, I don't even remember now where I saw it or who shared it with me, but I just thought it was so good because I know at some point in time, we all probably can relate to this. Um, but I, did anybody else know this? I did not know this. I'm like, was fascinated by it. Yeah, I loved this. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't aware of that either. So, okay. Um, here's, well, okay. Scratch that, uh, scratch the homework. Cause you can't do that. I was going to say, if you didn't watch it, <laughs> so we'll let's, we'll search for that. We'll continue to search for that. Surely they are going to, it's got to be on YouTube or something. I mean, I just cannot imagine that it's not out there because it was really, really great. Um, and I don't know about you guys, 
but no matter who you're for or who you like or who you don't like, if you watched the debate last night, we can all watch um, something a little more positive, <laughs> a little little different tonight uh, or the next couple of nights. Um, yeah, it was interesting. And then the other thing I would really love for you to do is go back and meditate on these six and maybe journal a little bit more about it, specifically about why is your number one your number one? Um, why, do, why do you think that you picked that one? And also, do you think that it would change? Um, or have you, have you already experienced it changing? Because I, I definitely do. Um, oh, yes, Rochelle. <laughs> uh, we might, depending on uh, who you love or who you don't love, maybe moving to Canada, you may get an influx of people <laughs> after, after the election. Um, uh, Heather and I talked about that this morning. I think her husband and I both may be, depending on what happens. So, um, so journal on that. And then, yes, continue writing your handwritten notes. I have slacked on my handwritten notes, but I just busted mine back out yesterday, put them on my desk. And so today I'm determined. Um, so, yep, yeah, that's it. So have a great week. Think about those. And thanks for being on. And don't forget to share with your friends. Thanks, Monica. Thanks, guys. Have Thank a you. great week. See ya.